What's going on guys? Yeah, Corey Needs here and in this video I'm going to tell you about your servo mechanism and really what that is and um, how you can start better using it for your life to get the results that you want. And I just kind of decided to make this video real quick and spontaneously because I just finished reading this book, not the whole book, but a chapter of this book called Psycho Cybernetics. It's a phenomenal book. It's considered the founding father of personal development, you know, before Think and Grow Rich and Rich Dad Poor Dad and all these other um, variations of your, you know, developing your mind. And, and I thought it was interesting because I've been doing a lot of uh, subconscious reprogramming training and studying the programs offered in Quanta that teach you you know, just they really teach you about understanding your mind and just seeing things how they are. Um, and I've been going through Mind Masterpiece by Jim Lutz, where you know it teaches you the rules of the subconscious mind and how to use it. And I just wanted to tell you the rules of the subconscious mind real quick, so you can better understand how that works and how this is all related to your servo mechanism, which is really, you know, kind of like your subconscious mind and your self-image and um, your internal communication system because your, your servo mechanism and how your psycho cybernetics works is really it's a communication system within yourself that helps you better communicate um, with yourself internally and externally to achieve you know goals you know that's why it's called a servo mechanism it serves you to accomplish and achieve so real quick um, rule number one of the subconscious mind is every thought or idea will cause a physical reaction. This is organic language. Um, rule number two is what is expected, what is expected tends to be realized. So the brain and the nervous system only respond to mental images, which is a form of blueprint embedded in neuropathways of the mind. Rule number three, the imagination is more powerful than knowledge when it comes to your own mind and the mind of others. I don't know if there'd be any other circumstance, you know, your mind or other people's minds, but that's what it says. Rule number four, opposing ideas cannot be held at the same time. That's, that's a key one for self-image. Rule number five, once an idea has been accepted by the subconscious mind, it remains there until replaced by another one. Rule number six, emotionally induced system S symptoms will tend to cause organic change if persisted long enough. So that means how you're thinking, how you're feeling can actually change your physiology and your body. Uh, rule number seven, each suggestion acted upon your acted upon creates less opposition to each new suggestion. So that means, you know, the law of consistency where if you're repeating the idea over and over and over again, it's going to be easier for you to accept it and see the results. Hence, you know, reinforces the belief in doing it more and more. Uh, rule number eight, the greater the conscious effort, the less the subconscious responds. And this is key. This is what really stuck out today when I was reading um, this chapter on psycho-cybernetics was the greater the conscious effort that you have, the less the subconscious responds. And it also says in chapter two, right here, there's five keys to focus on. And the fifth key says, this is part of it in the description. It says, you must learn to trust your creative mechanism to do its work and not jam it by becoming too concerned or too anxious as to whether it will work or not. Or by attempting to force it by too much conscious effort. So what that's saying is, if you're consciously, you know, forcing yourself with willpower, saying, I am successful, I'm going to do it, I'm going to make it happen, I have lost 10 pounds, or I am pretty, I am whatever, it's like, the less your subconscious or your server mechanism is going to help you out, because you're just forcing it and drilling it, and you're blocking your own greater power from accomplishing what you want. You know, I mean, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a better way to describe it, like a story to put into effect of how this rule can be better understood. The greater the conscious effort, 
the less the subconscious responds. So I guess this is trying to say like, you want to be focused on a specific goal, but you don't want to have to, you know, consciously think of every single step and every detail and every, that is too much. It's too much for your conscious mind to handle. Your subconscious mind is infinitely more powerful than your conscious mind. And when you let things happen more naturally by just putting in the work, by taking action, and by focusing on a goal, then your servo mechanism will be there to help you. It'll guide you by letting you know if you're off course and it'll put you back on, you need to do more of this or you need to do this stuff better. Or if you're doing it right, it'll, it'll give you positive feedback and let you know just keep doing what you're already doing. So I hope that helped. Um, the key takeaway, I think, understanding your servo mechanism is understanding the greater the conscious effort that you put on whatever you're trying to achieve, the less your subconscious mind will respond. So the key is to be focused on a specific target, you know, a monthly income goal if you want to lose weight. But you want to really relax, let go, just do the work like yourself physically, and then let your servo mechanism and your greater subconscious mind help you achieve that. Hope this helped. I'll talk soon, guys. Peace.